Hello Internet, I am John, and today I'm starting a uh, playthrough on the uh, Stellaris 3.9 beta branch, which brings us uh, Void Dweller Hive Minds. Um, previously, the devs were hesitant to allow Hive Minds to be Void Dwellers because the population growth from starting with three habitats with spawning pools was just overwhelming. Uh, and I did, I played with making a mod to, to do this, and it was pretty ridiculous, so. Uh, but with the changes to habitats that are coming in 3.9, um, we're only going to be starting with one habitat with Void Dwellers, so we only get one spawning pool, uh, which in turn means that the devs feel kind of okay about this. So uh, we're going to give it a shot and see how it plays. Um, we're also playing with the new Void Hive Civic, which isn't actually bound to Void Dwellers, but it is, I think it's a Hive Mind Civic. Hive mind only Civic um, that auto builds uh, mining and research stations in your territory, um, which isn't really all that important, I feel like, except maybe with Progenitor Hive. But in our case, as Void Dwellers, what we're really here for is the megastructure build cost and build speed. Um, I, I don't know how important that'll actually be, but it should be nice when we're paying. Uh, out the nose for habitats in the early game. As far as other things on this Empire build, uh, we're also doing Ascetic, much like uh, Machines, Hive Minds also have amenities problems, and Ascetic and Charismatic will help us uh, mitigate those inefficient amenities sources that we have. Um, the habitability doesn't really matter. As you can see, we're taking non-adaptive here. Uh, we're just gonna build a bunch of habitats and live on them. So. There are going to be 100% habitability for, habitability for us, I think, uh, even with non-adaptive. Um, and then Rapid Breeders is, is what that non-adaptive gets us. Um, Void Dweller has changed a little bit. Uh, I, you know the happiness penalty? I was playing another Void Dwellers game on the 3.9 branch, but not with a hive mind. And the happiness actually bit me. I was I had a uh, resort world that I was used like filling with soldier pops, because you can build strongholds on resort worlds for some reason. But uh, my soldiers were really unhappy, even though it was a resort world, and because they didn't want to be in gravity, so. Um, but uh, since we're a hive mind, we don't care about the happiness penalty, so we really only care about the output penalty, which wouldn't matter for something uh, like a fortress world. So, um, but yeah, I, I think in the mid game, we will probably uh, make a couple hive worlds and go gene ascension and like create a, a branch of the species that can live in gravity uh, to mine on those hive worlds because uncapped raw resource districts are kind of nice. But for now, uh, we're going to stick to our habitats. Um, as far as game settings, we're going down to medium. Last time we were uh, well, large, and that was a bit a bit much. Um, do more Fallen Empires. I'm going to move endgame forward a little bit. Uh, waiting until uh, 2400 for, for endgame stuff to fire is a long time. Uh, let's see, other stuff. I'm also going to turn down habitable worlds a little bit. If I can find it. Yeah. Um, this is, I realized, uh, last game with the machines... Part of the reason we had so many habitable worlds in our starting cluster was that I had habitables set to 1x. Oh, we can leave, we can leave free FTLs up. Um, and ordinarily, I play with habitables turned down a little bit. Since we're playing Void Dwellers, this is particularly good for us. Uh, although it's the scaling on this is actually nonlinear. It's not, you don't get three quarters at x7.75. It's very strange, is what I hear. I haven't gone and like counted, but that's, that's the rumor. Um, but yeah, ordinarily I keep the, the habitable worlds a little lower. Uh, and then as far as crises, crisis type random. Random means unbidden. It just does, right? So we're going to set it all and we'll see if we actually get there. Um, yeah, all right. See what we get.
So habitats have changed quite a lot in the beta branch. As you can see, we get one. We have a single habitat, um, rather than three habitats. We're already in the hole on housing. We're, um, we're not in the hole on pop growth. Maybe? Interesting. Um, in the previous version of the beta, uh, you would start out with a high pop. Oh yeah, we okay, we are. We, we have the minus 0.96 from high pops. So we are starting out with a, a pop growth penalty just from the small size of our planet. Uh, so we are going to want to get more Habs up quickly, and we're going to want to make more space for our, our, our bugs to breed in. Um, oh, this is a beautiful little cluster. Well, we'll see about, about this, but we, we could easily have just three choke points here, right? This here and here. Um, we, could, we might go up to four, but uh, as Void Dwellers, uh, I'm going to play this fairly classically for Void Dwellers. Um, we're going to take like 15 systems maybe, and then just build habitats. And then my thought is that in the mid game, uh, once we get genetic ascension, then we can start um, doing things like integrating vassals, doing warfare, going and taking other people's pops and integrating them into the hive mind. Um, and then all of our habitability problems go away and we can start like making use of uh, all the planets we have and as much space and as many pops as we can acquire. Doing warfare as a hive mind before you have genetic ascension, I guess, I mean, cybernetic works too, but why, why? Um, why would you as a hive, right? It's, there's, you can't capitalize on the trade stuff that cybernetic gets, so it's, it's not great. Um, so, right, yeah, going to war as a hive mind before mid-game isn't very profitable. Uh, so the real the real question for hives is like making sure that you are in a position by when your ascension like kicks off to then be able to go make war that you haven't fallen too far behind. Um, and we'll see. I don't feel like Void Dwellers is in a super strong place right now. Um, we are playing an ensign. Uh, we we should. It's not that many empires on this map. Like we should have enough space. We should be able to get as many systems as we need to get strong. But we may end up a little behind the curve. Uh, we'll see how it goes. A couple other things I noticed playing Void Dwellers previously, previously that surprised me. We start with a hydroponics bay. We don't start with a uh, crew quarters or umbilicals or whatever here. Um, and the other thing is that I think we start in... Okay. Interesting. So, as, an or as a non-hive empire, you start in militar militarized economy. So you start with a penalty to consumer goods production and a bonus to ally production, uh, as, as this policy here. I was building all these like consumer goods factories and was just baffled by why I could not feed the science I wanted to feed. And it was because I, was in, I started in an economic policy. Uh, okay, yeah, so let's... Go surveying our choke points. We got a decent guy, right? That's that's anomaly discovery. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, as far as leaders, I went with uh, the leader experience gain. It should level up all of our nodes a little bit faster. Um, sciences. Yeah, we're gonna want physics research. We're gonna want nutri grid. Um, up growth speed or unity. Uh, I'm not sure what my uh, traditions plan is yet. Actually. Uh, the Void Dweller traditions mostly got reworked and kind of nerfed, so um, it's not as obvious, right? Uh, uh, expansion is no longer like a mandatory first pick. We might go unyielding here for um, Starbase Economy as one does with Gestalts, uh, but yeah, these are all good first picks. Uh, I think we do this one to speed out the others. Habitat expansion is super expensive now, so that's going to wait. Um, menial join up would be good. Armor is never bad either. I don't think we need the Corvette stuff, because I'm not planning to go early war. Um, but yeah, this opens up the like the uh, construction techs. What are we going to do with... Okay, so we have a building slot. That's good. We could do alloy foundries. Um, we're going to want to replace the synaptic nodes with a simul- or whatever they call simulate sensorium sites. Not simulation sites, sensorium sites. But we're, as with uh, machines, we're gonna build these everywhere. 
Um, they're just, they're so good. But they're plenty unique. So, um, so we're going to want to replace that with a sensorium site at some point. Um, our food situation could get a little ugly here, right? We're already, like, running pretty low and we're already maxed on jobs. So, that's not ideal. Why? That's weird. What do I have jobs using food? Okay, yeah, these Synapse drones that we're getting from here use food. Um, it's been a while since I played Hive, I apologize. Yeah, so this is another way in which Sensorium sites are better, is that the jobs that they give just use energy instead of energy and food to produce the same amount of uh, unity output, plus amenities. Yeah, so we're going to want to do that pretty early. Um, we'll probably do Mining District first, because minerals are the... You, you, need, you need them to build everything, right? You need them for alloys. For uh, for hives specifically, our research drones use minerals as well. So we're going to need a ton of minerals. And we're, we're up on am amenities. So, like, we have space. Or we, we have pops that we could be... What? Really? I don't get a... I don't get a crime job? Oh, that's really annoying. That's really annoying. Um, this is a complaint I had about the uh, the regular or the, the non-hive Void Dweller situation now, too, was that habitats can get really big now, right? I had a habitat with, like, 22 districts and 80 pops, and I was still stuck with, like, a level 2 habitat capital that gave me uh, one or two enforcers, right? So I was having to build um, crime suppression buildings and build... Uh, like a bunch of amenities buildings because I wasn't getting amenities scaling up with my capital either with my uh, population. So that crime, so th this crime number is something we're going to have to keep an eye on. Um, let's do the, uh, the, and the mining one first. Ah, but I can't. We have to wait. I mean, because we cost uh, unity with the new, the void hive thing. So these will all get built for us. So we can just wait on those and hold him for building outposts. But yeah, you see we can, so we can build these major orbitals over like planets and minor orbitals over moons and asteroids and things. And major orbitals give you fractions of district slots and minor orbitals give you fractions of building slots. And then when you upgrade with like, when you do the, uh, the habitat upgrade techs, there are two of them now. Um, it gives you a decision to upgrade the habitat, and that multiplies the effects of orbitals. So my thought here is that mostly we want to be just building more base habitats for a while. Um, orbitals can also add, like, raw resource district caps. Um, so we might build a couple orbitals in situations where we want to specialize a habitat to do uh, a particular raw resource. But we're not going to be building a whole lot of orbitals until we have, like, the habitat upgrade techs, and then we can actually get, like, worthwhile districts and building slots out of them. Um, the, the minor ones, the ones around the asteroids for the building slots, they're kind of okay. They're pretty inexpensive. Um, so we might build some of those, because we probably will. Yeah, I, I guess that, that would let us get both alloy foundries and uh, the crime suppression. So we might do a couple of those early, but... Um... Oh, that's just another nice thing about hives, is that alloy foundries aren't as important because all your industrial districts just produce alloys. Uh, with regular void dwellers, alloy foundries are nice because you can take a, a non-specialized capital or a, an, a, like a mining habitat where you want to be boosting your mining output and you can put an alloy foundry on it and you get two metallurgists. Um, and you're not like also producing consumer goods you just get straight metallurgists because we're going to need a ton of alloys to build habitats um, just for for giggles right I, uh, you're right so they they raised the cost of these capital complexes in the most recent update to this um to the beta so they were they were like 75 and 750 before which was very affordable now it's closer to um what Habitats cost before. Oh, it's so weird that it's 200 and 1500 base. 
it's always been like ten times as much uh, alloys as influence. And I've always thought about that ratio, right? Where like if you're making three influence per month, then you want to be making thirty alloys per month to like feed continuous habitat construction like in ratio. So now the ratio is different. I need to keep an eye on that. So we want like four and three. Yeah. So if we have plus four influence per month, then 30 alloys per month keeps us like at optimum habitat output. Um, they did remove the influence cost from the orbitals though. So that's kind of nice. I guess that's probably why they increased the influence ratio here, but it's, it's very strange. Um, so yeah, you know, 70, if we have to build two minor orbitals to get a building slot, 70 alloys for a building slot isn't so bad. Um, so yeah, here I guess what we'll probably do is mining and then maybe industrial, right, to, to boost our alloy output further. Um, we may do a little bit of fleet construction to boost our power projection, but uh, yeah, sure, let's, let's kick it off. Let's get it going. And naturally we'll also want another science ship early. We'll probably fall, like... Keeping up with tech as, as Void Dwellers now is kind of annoying. Anything good in scientists? Anomaly research speed will be okay. What's this? Leader experience gain. Oh, th yeah, this guy. We'll take this guy. Once we have the... We can afford him now. I don't really care about the experience gain. He'll probably die before he like reaches level cap anyway. Um... And it's not super critical as Void Dwellers to, like, survey a bunch, because you're not going to expand a bunch. So... I think two scientists will be fine. Oh, and I'm a... a fool. I should be uh, using my fleet to scout as well. As he stumbled into a Leviathan or something. Nope, not quite. Okay, there we go. Okay, yeah, you see we're, um, our, our mining stations are getting auto-built in our home system. This isn't great. So, so for Void Dwellers, it's hard to tell which systems are going to be good to colonize and build a ton of habitats in, but the heuristic is that, like, the more crap there is in a system, the better. So here we have, like, a couple asteroids, like two planets, okay, so three actual planets, um, two moons, and some asteroids. So that, that gets us what? Um, one and a half districts from the three planets with majors, and then one, yeah, if, if it's actually, if it's two asteroids and two moons, it's like two building slots. So that's not very much. That's not a, a like a huge world, right? Here, now this, this is a lot, of, this is more stuff, right? So we have you know, five or six planets, seven planets, um, is like three and a half districts, and a smattering of moons and asteroids, that's good. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, six planets, but not a whole lot of moons, so that one, you know, maybe that's like an industrial world, but not a, uh, If we have somewhere we can get lots of buildings, we could use like, you could do refineries, you could do Fortress World. Um, again, lots of planets, no, uh, oh, pre-sapience. That's interesting. Um, and I'm gonna go, before I forget, we're gonna do, uh, where's my pre-sapience policy? We're gonna protect them. And the reason we're gonna do that is that as a hive, um, we could, once we get genetics, we could like uplift them and integrate them. And then that gets us some habitable, or some ability to, so, and they're, they're desert adapted, so we could use them to settle the savanna world. Um, so I, I like protecting free sapiens as I've. Right, you're, you're moving, construction ship is idle. Hmm. We have surveyed the system. Oh, that's, that's lousy. Here's a trinary star, that could be good for us. Um, some energy. Okay, it's just on the star, but in the previous version of the beta, Void Dwellers couldn't, like, build orbitals on stars, so you had, I had a lot of trouble getting, like, enough energy districts. 
Uh, I'm hopeful that with the ability to put them on stars now, that will be a little less bad. Okay, right, so traditions. Traditions, traditions. We're gonna want genetics. Uh, unyielding might be good. We're gonna want prosperity. We're gonna want supremacy. Enmity is a new one they added uh, with humanoids, I think. Um, that gives you a bunch of stuff for, for like rivalry related. Um, I'm still not sure. It says research labs build speed minus 100%. I'm, I, I assume it's plus 100%, but um, I don't know. I'm, I play a little bit friendly for that. Uh, um, adaptability, oh, right. So as far as like stuff that specifically interacts with void dwellers, um, domination reduces habitat alley upkeep, supposedly. In the previous version of the beta, it didn't work quite the way I expected it to, uh, but the influence gain would be really good for us, and the deviancy reduction would be good for us if we're gonna have problems with uh, getting or like whatever compliance drone jobs. Um, drone output's never bad. Did we just still get housing? Synaptic nodes adds housing. Synaptic nodes are the the crappy ones. The uh, the oh that's not it. Where's my... Wow. Um, these are the synaptic nodes. The, the ones that cost give us jobs that cost food to make unity. So that's not as good as like regular dominations, like plus housing stuff would be for us. So that's kind of annoying. Um, but we will probably still take domination. Uh, prosperity gives plus percent max habitat districts. Oh, and housing from habitation districts. Okay, that's interesting. Um, but the plus percent districts doesn't do us very much good in, in the early game. It's better once we have uh, like habitat upgrades and the alloys to build lots of orbitals. Uh, and then and then that plus percent multiplier on a, a larger base is more significant. Because uh, if you're below 10 districts, you don't get anything. Um, yeah, prosperity will be good eventually. Um, expansion doesn't do much for us at all anymore. This used to be minus 20% habitat build cost as the opener, and that is gone now. So, I mean, new colonies additional pops is still good, but because we only have one habitat per system, uh, we're looking at, you know, 15 extra pops instead of like 40 extra pops if you were building habitats like one per planetary body instead of one per system. Population growth, not bad. Um, empire size, not bad. Uh, the influence cost it could be interesting. I think I think void dwellers probably benefit from taking more systems now than they used to, right? Like you could still go up to forty habs, you would just need forty systems. So that bonus is still good for for like picking up your initial expansion. Um, what else? Right, adaptability. They got rid of planetary surveying. Resources from habitat planetary features plus fifty percent. I'm not even clear what that means. Uh, maybe we'll take adaptability and see what it does. Uh, But there, there is a building slot here, which is nice. Uh, I don't think, right, Prosperity no longer gives us a building slot. It just gives us housing and max districts. Um, but habitability plus 10%, who cares? It's void dwellers, right? Um, and resettlement cost, okay. Uh, upkeep, not bad actually. It's, it's kind of hard to like cram up enough refineries into habitats now. You know, before you could just build like more refinery habitats and get more building slots that way. Now you need a whole system per refinery habitat uh, and, and getting max buildings on them is kind of annoying. So that that's not a bad bonus. Um, but yeah, so most of the like really impactful uh, Void Dweller tradition swaps are kind of gone. Um, I think Domination's probably the most significant for us. So I, I feel like our initial choices are kind of domination, expansion, or unyielding. Um, defense armies. Yeah, so this would basically just be starbase economy. Um, given, sadly, our cluster is looking a little bit messier than I might have hoped here, right? It looks like we might have more like four entry points. Um, Hmm. 
We might also like be the exclusive owners of part of this though. We'll have to we'll have to explore a little more and see. Um I think we do domination. Well Yeah, unyielding is tempting for uh Yeah, and if we build a bunch of solar panels and a bunch of hydroponics bays, that those are pops that I don't need here, and that's a district I don't need here. Um, it is alloys that I'm not spending on habitats, though. I, I'm curious to see if they changed how domination works now, because before it wasn't applying the discount to um, capital upkeep or to, like orbital upkeep. Let me see if I can even find the orbital. Right, so here it says upkeep one alloy. Uh, it was just applying the discount to like district upkeep. And districts have alloy upkeep now, which is really annoying. Um, so I think I think in the interest of playtesting... Oh, and yielding's so good though. But influence is going to be our limiting factor on habitat production. Let, you know, put to, fine. Um, so here we, we got our minus 20%. Yeah, okay, so it applies to districts, but not habitation districts still. And not to capitals. And not to fr fragments. So that's really annoying. Um, we we rolled, got really lucky with the governor, though. That, the, the building and district upkeep production here is... Very nice for Void Dwellers. Okay. Well, probably should have gone on Yuling. Oh, well. I guess we still could, right? That, that's something I've seen or heard of uh, Void Dwellers doing. You just take like, the first couple nodes of Domination, and then you switch over to like Expansion or whatever. So we could, uh, could kind of cross over. I don't think our early Ascension perk picks are super important Council here, Legend. right? We no longer... That's one nice thing is that we no longer need um, <sighs> yeah we, I think we're gonna fire this and switch over to the unity one we'll come back to this when we have more planets and the uh, amenities across more planets matters more it's kind of my my take on gestalt agendas at the moment um, what was I saying Right, as far as early Ascension perks, we no longer need Voidborn. I don't, I'm not sure we can even take Voidborn. Um, I don't think we can. You're right, it's not, it's not here. So that frees up a slot for us early. Uh, we could do, like, nihilic, Nihilistic Exquisition is okay for Hives. Um, Dominion would help accelerate expansion. I don't really like Ascendancy that much. It's kind of overrated, I think. Uh... The amenities usage would be fine on one vision, but Master of Nature doesn't help us very much. Or, or like, yeah, that's it's kind of terrible. So personally, I think the orbital system should be replaced by um, blockers, right? Instead of having to send a construction ship to build orbitals on planets, they should just be blockers in the planet menu that, like, cost alloys to clear. Uh, in which case, like, Master of Nature or, like, Bulldozer Governors or, like, all this stuff would then interact with this system. Um... We might do Imperial Prerogative. I like that one, especially because we're gonna have a bunch of planets and with uh, with Hive bonus, or so with between Imperial Prerogative and taking expansion eventually and um, maybe some Hive Civics, we could end up with like pretty low empire size um, from being under the minimum value of 50 plus four. Okay, all right. Um, so Imperial Prerogative is something I often pick for Void Dwellers. I don't know that it's like the best here, but uh, shared destiny we might want eventually, and then they changed ascensions, so now you can't. It requires two other perks to be selected, so that'll it'll have to be no finish, finish. Yeah, I, I forget what the math here works out to be, but basically it it pushes back. Um, I, I thought it pushed back. Ascensions to like fourth tradition, basically, but maybe I'm wrong. Hmm. We'll see. But yeah, and then we'll do we'll do mega structures. Uh, that's an interesting point that we'll want to keep a couple of systems habitat free 
for uh, a Dyson Sphere and maybe a Ring World. So, worst case scenario, we make some claims in the mid game and like do just these tiny territorial wars. And I think that's an interesting point for Void Dwellers generally now is that like yeah, we need more more systems for habitats, but we can go take like five systems from another empire and then be fine forever with like five more habitats is a bunch of time and space to build up in. Um, so. Yeah, we don't, it's not the end of the world if we do a little bit of uh, territorial war later. Um, oh, this food situation. How's our, uh, okay, so I think we're gonna do, is we're gonna do a habitation district, an industrial district, um, maybe another hydroponics bay. Yeah, I think those are what we're gonna need here, right? We need the, the housing to reduce our high pops penalty. Uh, so we'll get that with habitation and then uh, alloy output and food. Nah, probably, probably alloys first. Do I have the pops to do it? Yeah, I kind of do, right? I can I can shed two um, or my last two maintenance drones to, to do that. This is shaping it to be an okay system. Yes. Some some energy, some minerals, and some. Uh, is this the one with the pre-sentience? No, I thought it was. Did they not show us pops? Okay, this one had the pre-sentience. Our construction is complete. Influence, good. So weird to like not. I just want to. I just want to build research stations, but it's it's kind of it wants to auto build them. It cost me to do it. One order, two orders. Um, this one looks better. Just the star. Well, okay, that's a bunch of moons. That's we nice. Which one here? I do want to have him like come back here and explore this arc and see if we are actually the only, like see if we have it cut off from the rest of the galaxy. That would be quite nice. We have surveyed the system. We could actually be building other habitat right now. Right, we have the, uh, so it costs what? 140 and 1,000. Okay, not quite yet. We'll need a little more allies, but pretty soon here. I, hmm. Yeah, that's a rough system to start with. Maybe we'll do this. Oh yeah, three three mining, one energy. Yeah, we'll build it here after he, he builds the station. Okay, this has the, like size one deposits supposedly there are a couple of um systems that have like guaranteed so instead of guaranteed habitables what void dwellers get now is a couple of systems that have it yeah, will do uh ah, that one and then this one um a couple systems that have guaranteed deposits so we still have to build the habitats um but I think these like size one deposits you never see, right? Like, who's it? and there was one I saw the other game. Yeah, and the, the alloy deposit, yeah. So I think this is one of our guaranteed habitable systems. Um, and then there's another one that should have like energy and science, I think. So we'll, we'll definitely want to take this one. And when, once we find the other like guaranteed one, we'll want that one as well. We have surveyed the system. Neat. 
Um. Toxic terraforming is such a silly mechanic. Like, you'd have to be so blocked in for it to be worth it. Okay, here, we got a, a one science deposit. I think this is our other, like, guaranteed habitable. It's, this one had, like, a fair bit of stuff as far as, like, planets. And, um, were you... Okay, that was what I ordered. We might build another construction ship. Okay, so this looks like it probably connects back out. We're seeing a lot of hyperlanes out. Having a black hole would be pretty good, though, for a matter decompressor later. We could kind of target our expansion this way. At the very least, we could, like, cut here, and this might not connect back. I like that plan. Construction is complete. Okay, we're not going to build stuff. Yeah, let's put another construction ship. We're going to need a lot of construction ships. Last game, I had, like, five or six in like a 20 system empire um okay so there's nothing like cursed here it's just a regular black hole there's no no void horror or whatever um so that's good to know let's see if this connects back out uh, i can't oh can i wrap there all right um we're starting to fall negative on food and unemployment that's okay though yeah, okay, so we needed a maintenance turn for amenities anyway. I think we are going to do the uh, replacement with the sensorium site. For, and it'll help our food and our amenities situation, so. Okay, that's pretty good. We got some... some these, like, getting a big mineral deposit now as Void Dwellers is somewhat disappointing. Because it still just turns into three mining districts. Um, okay, let's... Uh, how long do you have? 90%? Mm. Okay, maybe we'll use this one to build more outposts, and he will build a, a uh, habitat here when he finishes. Our construction is so great. And we got a habitable. Another arid, right? We got desert, savanna, arid. It's a little odd. Um, okay, let's build the... Uh... Oh, do I not have... Ah, short of influence. Okay. All right, but that's... Uh, so two months. Surveyed which? That one? Okay. All right, yeah, that's... It's only the one energy, though. We have four science deposits. So this could turn into, into a, a fairly tall science habitat. Um, yeah, I think we are going to run into some energy problems again. Hopefully this trinary system will help us. We the system. I need 140 to build the habitat. Okay. Um, mean layout output is kind of nice. And then we pick one planetary body to build like a, a starting station on. Okay, so this one has two energy sources and a bunch of, wait, and two mining. Okay, um, yeah, we'll, we'll go there for now. Yeah, we're very much not like tech rushing here, right? Like we don't. I guess we have the mineral income that we could do a little more tech on our uh, capital. Technology conceived. Uh, food processing is kind of nice. The unity output would also be good. Um, yeah, it's going to be a while until we get like a dedicated food habitat. More habitables. Well, Tomb World hardly qualifies. Technology conceived. Research speed would be nice. Tech drone would be nice. These these are all nice.
Oh, it does. It, uh, it gets the the geometry gets more complicated here. Um, I, I suspect this may connect back. That's unfortunate. So can I? No. Okay. So we're still capped at six districts. That's interesting. I maybe I misunderstood the patch notes. My understanding was that we would end up with eight districts on our starting habitat. Oh, we, 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 we do have eight districts, I just can't count. Okay, um, so that's annoying. We'll probably turn this mining district into maybe research once this uh, mining habitat comes online. does connect out. Still, you know, we could go here and there and then both so we're at one, two, three, five chokes. That's a lot. Um, I'm not happy about that. Uh, and, but I don't really see a way out of it. It's just the geometry we found ourselves in. Um, I think we build more fleet for uh... power protection. Because at this point we're like producing enough alloys our, our alloy production is out of ratio with our influence production, so if we could get our influence production up to like five, well, okay, we're we're approaching five. Um, hmm. All right. Still, more more Corvettes would be nice. Um, yeah, let's get, let's get a little more science going. Our construction is complete. Okay, spiritualist fallen empire. Where are they? They're over this way. Hmm, that could be, this could cut off some lines in on this side. That could be nice. Hishmal. Some call me Hishmal. Okay, void clouds, I think. Um, oh. Okay, don't. No, don't do that. Get out. Um, we, we don't want to be suiciding our initial Corvette fleet uh, into the void cloud. It's good to know that they're there and we can. Technology conceived. Oh. Where's my? Nope. Well. <laughs> that is the downside of the um. The new uh, scouting with your admiral strategy. I wonder what happens if the fleet's destroyed. Uh, but but we have these reinforcements coming in. Interesting. Interesting edge case. 
Where are they gonna? I wonder where they'll show up. Right? Like. <laughs> okay, this, uh, they're all missing an action. Um, you're not building stuff. We don't have enough for another habitat yet. How many, uh, what, how does, how does this work again? Yeah. Uh... We have surveyed the system. Generates mining and research station over a random ex deposit every four months. Okay, so I get one station every four months. That's not very many. Oh no, the trinary has betrayed us. We got no energy out of it. That's not what I was hoping for. Um... So we're going to have energy problems. That's how it's going to be. Uh, what is this? These new traits. Again with the new traits. Collector. Okay, mineral but All right. That's nice. We need that. And remind me again, for a habitat, it is... 140 and 1050. So, uh, in five... Oh, and that's going to hurt our power projection, losing our whole fleet. Whoops! Um, yeah, so four or five months, we can start another habitat. Gas? Okay. Not that I really want to be building orbitals over gas anymore. Okay, so we have we have something resembling a fleet again. Let's get a new a trickster's nice. I'm a trickster. Um, maybe maybe you'll outlive your predecessor. Uh, oh yeah. Okay, this is getting a little ugly. Um, Uh, do we start the science habitat or another, like, raw resource habitat? I think we're gonna need a lot of raw resources. We still have a little bit more room here, yeah, to, like, shift raw resources out and replace them with science districts. Um, I think maybe we build the habitat here. Uh, as far as worlds... Yeah, oh, yeah, we'll put it on, like, this... Oh, it has to be a major. Interesting. Um, yep, that's it then. Okay, so here's... We'll, this will be our, our energy... We got at least two... We can put six energy just, just six districts here. Uh, and then this one we'll use primarily for mining, and then maybe some energy as well. Idle science ships... Don't want that. How are you coming along? 85%. Yeah, we should start a colony ship. Um, can I afford a colony ship? I cannot. We'll probably put a uh, some more more food production on our next on these habitats when they come up. We're gonna need it. I think we're approaching an hour. I should really get better at like setting a timer or something. Um, yeah, okay. So that could have gone better. Um, I, I didn't really think through this tradition choice. Uh, I mean, the extra half a point of influence per month is nice. That that will accelerate things a little bit. I mean, so to, to get a... If a habitat is 
150 influence, 140 influence. Um, going from three and a half to, well, hmm, maybe the marginal gain here is actually fairly small, right? Because we get bonus for being a hive. Um, 3.2, 4.2, 4.7, yeah, okay, that adds up. Um, so we're going from like 4.5 to like five. Uh, so what, 140 over five is, 28 months to get the influenceable habitat versus 140 over 4.5 is 31 months. So that's saving us three months per habitat, uh, the extra influence from domination. That's not, that's not bad actually. Um, I do wonder about the balance of that versus starbase economy. Um, because, like, we can make more alloys, right? Like, we're, we're producing a lot of alloys. And part of that is this, uh... This replicator deposit has been buffed, and it puts out a lot more alloys than it used to. Um... Hmm. I don't know. Anyway, interesting experiment that we will continue another time. Thank you for watching.